Hello everyone, this is Todd Blankenship with Rocketstock.com and in this After Effects tutorial I'm going to show you how to make any boring normal old hallway look like the upside down from Stranger Things. And this of course is to celebrate the release of Stranger Things Season 2. And I didn't want to take the time to model and animate a realistic looking Demogorgon, so you get this creepy ghost waffle instead. So yeah. And if you want to follow along, I've given you the assets that I used to create this tutorial as well. Let's get started. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to do this main hallway shot. But you can use this technique to add this effect to pretty much any shot that you want. The basic idea is to track it and add in the textures to whatever looks like it needs the texture on it. So in this case, I'm going to add texture to these walls. But as you'll see, these walls are very, very, very bland. There's nothing on them at all. So what I had to do was add tracking points with some gaff tape all the way down the walls. Because I knew that I wanted to add texture to these walls, and I figured that After Effects probably wouldn't be able to track it unless I gave it something to track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take our hallway shot here, and I'm going to drag it to the new comp button. So there we go, we have a composition. And one trick that I like to do whenever I'm doing these kind of effect shots and I want to make sure that there's enough contrast for the tracker to see all of these tracking points, is I'm going to go ahead and pre-compose our shot here. So I'm going to right-click it and select pre-compose, and I'm going to move all attributes into the new composition. And then I'm going to go ahead and double-click into the hallway shot that we just pre-composed, and I'm going to select our footage, and I'm going to go up to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a lot of contrast to the scene. So I'm just going to drop down the darks quite a bit, and I'm going to bring up the highlights quite a bit, and what that's going to do is it's going to make these tracking markers kind of pop out a little bit. Yeah, just like that. Now, we're not going to keep this color correction later on. We're going to delete it, but I'm going to use that contrast to track the scene a little bit better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into our main comp, and I'm going to select our hallway shot here, and I'm going to go over to the tracker, and I'm going to select Track Camera. Okay, so now our track is done, and as you can see, our tracking points are showing up really well. If I scale up to tracking points, you can see that our our contrast really helped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a point in the shot where there's quite a bit of the tracking data, somewhere like right around there, and I'm going to start portioning out the scene in 3D space. So I'm going to start with this right wall here, and I'm going to just click and drag, and it'll kind of bring up this lasso tool. I'm going to select all those tracking points. Let's go ahead and come down here and get this one too. And so there we go, there's our wall, and you can turn up the target size, and if you mouse over the middle of that target, you can drag it around and make sure that the perspective looks all right. So, yeah, that looks perfect. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to right-click, I'm going to select Create Solid and Camera. So now we have a solid on the right wall, and let's do the same thing. To get back to your tracking points, you just select your footage, select the 3D camera tracker, now we're back to our track points, and I'm going to select these four, or five, I guess check the perspective, drag it around. Perfect. And here we don't need another camera, we're just going to select right click, select create solid. And we're also going to do some cool stuff with these lights here. So I'm going to go to the camera tracker, I'm going to just select this one point here, I'm going to select create solid, and then I'm going to select one of these points on the backlight here, and I'm going to select create solid again. So now we have these solids with 3D position data, and let's go ahead and name them all. So here, this is the right wall. This one's the left wall. This one is the front light. And this one is the back light. Okay, now let's just go ahead and scale everything up just so we can see it really well. Okay, so there we go. There's our track. It looks pretty good. Everything's holding pretty solid to the wall. So now we can go ahead and start texturing everything. So first, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the hallway shot comp, and I'm going to turn off the curves adjustment that I did there. So now we have our color correction back to the log that I shot in the camera, and now it looks back to normal. So now we need to go ahead and set up the textures for the wall here. And so what I have for that is this texture of these vines, and I'll include that in the download as well. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just take our wall elements here, and they're all 3D elements, and let's just kind of line them up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start using the rotate tool, and I'm gonna scale it up quite a bit because we need it to fill up this whole wall. And as you can see, it's not quite lining up correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our right wall element here, and I'm going to hit the R key for rotation. And I'm going to hold down Command and slowly just kind of alter this rotation till it looks like it kind of matches the one on the wall itself. I'm going to keep scaling it and kind of messing with the rotation till it matches up. 
And you just want it to kind of line up with the, the bottom of the wall there. The only idea here is just to cover up the whole wall. And if you need to, you can go to the scale settings by hitting the S key and turn off the uniform scale. And then you can kind of start scaling on, just on the Y axis if you need to. Okay, that looks about right for this wall. Let's do the left wall now. Okay, so there we go. I've got both the walls kind of covered in this solid here. And now what we can do is apply our texture to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the right wall here. I'm going to go to pre-compose and I'm going to select, this is very important, make sure you select leave all attributes. So now we can go into this solid here and we're going to take our texture, drag it right on top, and you want to scale it way down because we have a lot of wall to cover. Something about right in there. And then I'm going to select the vines here and I'm going to go to effect, stylize, and select motion tile. And then on output width, I'm just going to run that up till it fills the frame there. And then do the same for the height. And then just go ahead and click mirror edges. Looks kind of weird here, but it'll look fine in the main comp. So I'm also going to go ahead and click on our vines again. Let's go to effect, color correction, curves. And I'm just going to add quite a bit more contrast to that. I don't really want as much of the green. I just kind of want it to be kind of black and white almost. So if we go back to our hallway comp, see, now you can see we have this texture all across the wall here. So let's go ahead and just do the same thing for the left wall. So I'm going to right click, pre-compose, leave all attributes, and I'm just going to go to this comp and command C to copy the vine texture here. And we'll go into the left wall and just hit command V to paste. And there you go, moving along. So now I'm going to go ahead and just select uh, multiply as the overlay mode for those. And another thing that you'll see is right here, there's a doorway. So obviously we don't want the texture to go over the doorway. So on the right wall here, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of turn down the opacity a little bit just so we can see what we're doing. So hit the T key, bring down the opacity. All right. So right there is our doorway. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the pin tool and it's really easy. You just draw a mask around that. And obviously we're going to invert that. Select your right wall layer, hit the M key and invert. And let's just go ahead and feather that just a little bit. Let's say maybe 12, something like that. So it's not so hard. And there you go. Let's turn our opacity back up. Okay, so after a quick RAM preview, here's what we've got. Obviously it looks kind of weird. The texture just looks kind of strange, but we're gonna work on that. So the first step is to add actual lights within After Effects to this scene. And we're gonna use the tracking data for these two actual physical lights in the scene to tell the lights where to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just go down here, right click, hit new light. And I'm going to do a point light at 100% intensity, hit OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the front light here and I'm going to hit the P key to drop down the position information. And I'm just going to click on that and hit command C to copy that position data there. And then I'm going to go up to the point light that we just created and I'm going to hit P again. And there, I'm just going to click on the position data and hit Command V to paste it there. So now we've got the front light and you can see the light is actually shining down on that part of the wall. Looks pretty cool already. And I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate that light, Command D, and we're gonna do the same thing for the backlight as well. So hit the P key, snag that position data right there with Command C, hit the P key, and paste it with Command V. So now we've got a light there and a light there, which is where our light in our actual scene is. And I think now we're at a point where we can go ahead and start to color correct everything the way that we're going to want it to be. So everyone probably has a different way of doing this, but I'm going to start out with a Lumetri effect. So I'm going to right click down here, go to new adjustment layer, and I'm going to go to effect, color correction, Lumetri color. And in here, basically we're going to go for way, 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 way darker. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and go to the curves here. And I'm just going to bring this way down. Okay, quite a bit. Let's bring the highlights up some. And I'm going to go to the blue channel. I'm going to pump the blue channel up quite a bit. Go to the green, pump a little bit of that up. And go to the red and pull that out. Okay, so already we're getting kind of a nice moody looking kind of look. We're just going to push it a little bit further. So I'm going to go to the basic correction here. And on the temperature, I'm just going to push it a little bit cooler still. So let's go about negative 15 there. And I still want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to keep pushing this down. Somewhere right around in there. And another thing that you might see that's looking kind of weird is that the edges of our texture here are super hard and they just kind of don't look right. So there's a really quick and easy fix for that. 
uh, you're just going to select your wall element here. So I'm going to do the left wall first and go up to right here to the rectangle tool and just double click it. And what that's going to do is it's just going to create a mask around the edges of the entire thing. And I'm going to drop down the mask settings by hitting the M key twice. And we're going to just bring the mask expansion in some, let's say like negative 80, something like that. And then we're just going to feather it quite a bit. That's just going to kind of help blend it a little bit, make it not so harsh. I'm actually going to give it a little bit more. I also don't like how hard this back wall is. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to select both of the nodes on the end of that mask there and just kind of bring it in some. Kind of like that. And then I want to feather the horizontal quite a bit more. So I'm going to unlink the feather options and we're going to, we're going to feather that quite a bit. Okay. So there we go. Now it just kind of blends a little bit into the end there. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other wall. So click on that, double click the rectangle tool. And now obviously we already had a, another mask on there. I'm going to go ahead and make that a subtract mask and drag it below. And so there we go. Now we got it back to the way it's supposed to be. And then on our second mask that we just created, we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So bring that down. I think we had like negative 117, something like that. Feather it quite a bit. And then we're going to pull this one back a little bit by selecting the two nodes of the mask there. Pull it back. Unlink and then feather horizontal quite a bit more, just like that. One thing that I will do is I'm, I actually like it better if I kind of turn down the opacity of this a little bit, something like that. So we got about 80%. And still, we need to drop the brightness down quite a bit. Somewhere right around there, I think. It's just about messing with, you know, the way that you want it to be color corrected. Obviously, you want it to be pretty dark because you want this texture to kind of blend in a little bit and not be so obvious. I also don't like the kind of this red that we're getting in the vines here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to color correction, tint, just to take the color out of that. So I can already see I do want to bring in some of the opacity of the wall again, just a little bit more. So that flashlight kind of shows up. So a couple months back, we released this pack of free volumetric light and dust overlays. So I'm going to go ahead and download that and we're going to use it in this project. So in the pack, you'll see there's all these different volumetric light kind of looks. And we're going to add one from the beam kit to the shot. And what the beam kit is, it's just some beams basically coming in from the side. And I'm going to just drag that into our comp. And I'm going to set that to screen mode. And we'll drag it beneath our color correction here. So now I'm going to just rotate it. And we're going to kind of get it in position. So as you know, we have the position data from the physical lights in the scene. So all I have to do is just make that 3D and we're going to use that position data again. So I'm just going to copy the position data and paste it to the beam kit element. And obviously that makes it really small up here in the top. We're going to scale that up holding shift. And you might notice that you don't see anything happening right now. When you make an object 3D and you have a light in the scene, it's going to make it where, where the lights light the object up. So here we don't want that. So I'm going to go to the beam kit I'm going to drop down the little drop down here, go to material options, and I'm going to turn off accepts lights. So there we go. Now we get it back. So again, we're just going to scale that to where it looks about right. And I'm going to turn down the opacity a little bit. It's just a little bit too bright. And then we also want to draw a mask around it. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of select sort of a triangle like shape around it. And we're just going to feather that out. Let's go ahead and duplicate that and paste that to the second light. And here I kind of want it to look like it's hitting the floor. So I'm just going to shift these nodes on the mask up a little bit. And then another of the key looks from the upside down is the dust that's kind of floating around everywhere. And luckily enough, there are some dust elements in the volumetric freebie. So I'm going to use the swirly dust. And I'm going to drag that in. And we're going to make that 3D. And just like before, Make it screen, and remember, when it, you make it 3D, you need to turn off accepts lights. And let's just kind of start pushing this stuff around the scene a little bit. So let's just go ahead and paste that same light position data. We'll scale it up quite a bit and just move it down into the scene. 
So first I'm going to go ahead and create a mask. So what I just did there was I double clicked the rectangle tool and I'm going to do kind of what I did on the wall texture and just bring it in a little bit with mask expansion and then feather that out just so the edges aren't kind of visible where the element stops. Something like that will work. So you can't really see anymore sort of the, the rectangle where it starts. And using a curves effect, you can control how much of the dust is visible. So if you just crush the darks down a little bit and mess with the highlights and all that, you can customize how much dust you actually see. And now we're just gonna kind of duplicate that a few times and just shift different sizes of it around the scene. So we, we need some up high and I'm just gonna bring those forward in Z space and bring those down and bring these ones way forward. And this is all up to you how you wanna do it. You can have as much or as little dust as you want. And on the ones that are up closer to the camera, just because logically they'd be a little bit out of focus, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a Gaussian blur on them. And I'm gonna set that to about 10. And I'm also gonna bring those down on the blacks a little bit so they're not quite as visible. Okay, and here's what we've got so far. All right, it's looking pretty good. So the only thing that I would do from here, just to kind of tie everything together, is I'm gonna do another new adjustment layer. I'm gonna go to Effect, Stylize, Glow, and I'm gonna turn up the glow radius like 700. All that's gonna do is just kind of blend everything together a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do another new adjustment layer. And I still think we need to darken things a little bit. So I'm just gonna keep darkening and darkening there we go and it's also looking a little too saturated on the blue side of things i'm going to go to effect color correction tint and i'm just going to set that to about let's say 30. there we go and there you go so with uh, just a little bit of tracking and some creative use of some of these free assets it's really easy to create some really cool looks so i hope you guys give this a shot and all the assets that you need are included in the download link below Good luck, guys. Hope you enjoy, and happy Halloween.